it's entitled Walking in Central Park with You. I want to walk through Central Park with you. Not as lovers, I'm suddenly too young for that now. That your distance is too great. Even when we were in bed together, you were two feet away but miles out of reach. That distance was always going to take the form of a straight razor, which you used to cut away your gravity so you could drift through those waters of the gray seas of all your future plans. It's 1138 Midtown Manhattan as I write you this letter, and already my thoughts of you have come in, the, come in on the waves of my fear and trepidation, which is usually kept at low tide by Prozac. Your ghost is always white as a uh, snowdrift. Not, not in New York where all the snow is black from the passing cars or the last construction work. More like Washington State or Minnesota or Germany where they do a better job hiding their excesses. It's not so unlike being at our apartment on Lee High Street where you needed to be held tightly with your head pressed firmly against my shoulder. It's true that the taste of coffee was not enough to keep you around. What time is it where you fade into uh, lightless theaters where all your dignities dance in mockery? I wanted to watch your movements in the grips of troubled sleep more than any film noir showed at 3 a.m. in the mo 3 a.m. But you should have known that the body is borrowed and never owned. It's a rental with no option to buy. We were all only visiting. And where did you think you were going to land before being shit out by the wards? Did you really believe that you were a saint or think that you could tame the ascending wilderness which you feared would consume the idol of your name? When you couldn't even tame your own perfect skin or claim your body as your own. Those antidepressants could have tamed your indignities before you embraced that fateful morning when you reached the end of your line. Or actually didn't. Oh, the end of your line. Those flames of the incinerator licked your perfect skin and hair as your body lay in the shadows of ruin, which you perfected as an art form or a well-planned assault. I still think of the great, the great dust that replaced your beauty. Did you think that you were going to get an applause after your silent exit? Those flames sent up smoke signals letting us know that you finally knew when to leave. That was your great escape, to avoid living in the encircled, the encircled life of a shut-in. Rooms, after all, become wombs of drywall and concrete if you stay too long. And the flicker of the television set where you wept for Dr. Quinn and touched by an angel became too bright, and your morning was never meant to come. Thank you.